Hey guys, I am finally coming to you with my DIY. You guys will have to bear with me because I don't really do much editing, so. And the way I've got my camera set up, I can't even see what I'm doing. So here's the paints that you need. I'm using all of the Apple Barrel. I've got Antique Parchment. Sunkissed Peach. Cloudless and Nutmeg Brown. And we're just using a little bit of the Nutmeg Brown. Then foam brushes. I got these at the Dollar Tree. Some nautical rope I got from the Dollar Tree. I've got a little bit of lamb's ear and a leaf. The other DIY that I did, I had two leaves, and this one, I think I'm just doing the one, but you can use, you know, whatever you want on the topping, on the topper. You're going to need your glue gun, glue sticks. I've got a few paper plates here for the paint. Then the three styrofoam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I went ahead and grabbed two that didn't have stems on it already, just to make it easier. And then I grabbed the one that had a stem, so this way I'll show you how to get that off. Super easy. I've got these just raggedy old little um, screwdrivers to stick in the pumpkin so I don't get paint all over my hands. As you can see, I already have paint on those from my last one. Then just a pair of scissors, a butter knife, and some paint brushes. I used this one the most for the detail a real tiny one but i also wanted these on hand in case i needed them and then some paper towels okay so <clears throat> what we're gonna do first is just go ahead and start painting the big pumpkins these are the colors that you're going to use for the pumpkins it's the cloudless the sunkissed peach and the antique parchment. So those are the three colors I used for the pumpkins. I dropped my stick. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just start with one color here. We'll start with the peach, the sunkissed peach. You guys can see me. Yeah, you can. Okay. We might have a lot of that, me getting up to see if you guys can see me. So just bear with me, please. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a foam brush. It doesn't really matter which one. And then I'm just going to grab a pumpkin and start painting. And when I did my first one, it took... Well, maybe I should stick one of these in there. It took about... Um, three coats, I would say. So I'll just go ahead and put it on there. There's no, you know, I didn't do this fancy. This is the first time I've ever made one of these, so, and the first time I've ever painted the foam pumpkins. So I just slapped the paint on there, and then I let it dry in like 30 minute intervals in between each coat. And and that was it for the base. So, and when I chose the colors for this originally, it was because those were what I was what I had on hand already. You guys can even see me. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I didn't. I guess I shouldn't have stuck that in the already the hole that was already there. Anyway, so I had just chosen colors that I already had on hand because I didn't want to go buy more. I have quite a bit of paint that I haven't been using, so you can use any colors you want to match your decor, your theme, and yeah. It does take a little while in between all the coats and everything, but it's not too bad. I think... It took me a couple of hours to get it finished, I would say. 
and of course I made some mistakes on my first one. I'll show you guys, I know some of you saw that in the other video. Um, I'll show you guys at the end what the other one looks like. Because I am going to be um, doing just a couple of slight differences with this one. And that's the thing with DIYs, sometimes you do it the first time and you mess up or you realize you should have done something differently and so then you tweak it the next time. Um, I've always kind of been a perfectionist, but ever since I've been crafting, that is not the case anymore. Look at this is not even a sting foot. And I don't care that I'm making holes in this because you're not going to see it. Anyway, I'm just trying to get it to stay. It might work better if you use uh, okay. a cute or a toothpick. Let me try this. There we go. Yeah, so using a toothpick might be better for you. Whatever works. I even used one of those plastic knives from like the um, fast food places, you know? I've used that as well. The main thing is just to just try and keep the paint off of your hands as much as you can so you can get the whole thing. I'm not going to paint the bottom right now. I'm just going to paint the sides and the top and get that first coat dry to dry. <clears throat> so I don't know. I may end up trying to speed this up because this is pretty boring. So you just paint it, paint your single coat on there, and, and then let it sit and move on to the next color. Okay, so there's my first coat. And I'm just going to set it to the side and let that dry. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and move on to the antique parchment. Oops, here, let me brush. And the foam brush pack, I think you get 10 in a pack, if I'm not mistaken, from the Dollar Tree. It's a pretty decent deal, but any foam brushes will work. I'm sure you can use a regular brush too, but I thought the foam brush would be quicker. So I'm going to slap that on there and keep it moving. I'll show you guys the first coat that I do on all of them, and then um, the second and third coat, I'll just, I'll show you when I'm done with it, because it's just the same exact process. And like I said, I'll let them dry for about 30 minutes and make sure they're dry before I do another coat. It's, uh, we've got a breeze today, but it's not... It's not cold and it's going to be heating up pretty soon, I'm sure, so they will dry in no time. This is a project, you can do it inside your house, but I don't like the paint smell, so I prefer to do it outside. <clears throat> so I wanted to get an early start, this way it won't get too hot on me. While I'm out here. So, what all have you guys been up to lately? Doing anything fun? I'm super excited because my daughter has been in online school since freshman year. She's a senior this year. And I was worried that, or, you know, 
sad that thinking that they weren't going to have a graduation ceremony because I didn't know because typically there's uh, you don't really get together with the school much it's all virtual so I wasn't too sure what was going to happen and this is a new school that she's at this year and um, well I just found out yesterday that they are having a full-blown graduation so I am so excited with they're having prom grad night the whole shebang so I am beyond excited for that. I was sad for her thinking that she wasn't going to be able to experience that. So. so that was my good news for the week. Okay, so there is the antique parchment. And then, see, and I still get it all over me, but that's okay. It comes right off. Then we are going to do the cloudless. This one. So, what we're going to do first is take off this stem, and you just kind of wedge, it's just a toothpick, it's on a toothpick that's just wedged in there, into the styrofoam, so you just kind of pry it up, see, and I think I'm going to keep this toothpick in there and just take off that little stem, so this way I can just use that for the holder. Okay. And I try to keep my paint by my plate so this way I don't screw up. It's, I mean, it's pretty hard to screw these colors up. They're quite a bit different, but I guess I'm OCD like that. Let's see. Okay. And I just use a different brush for each one. Roll them away when I'm done. Not a big deal. Easy peasy. Oops. This toothpick is not wanting to stay in. There we go. Well, being that we're covering the tops of these, it's really not a big deal to make that hole in the top. So, just try to... Oh, crap. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you're DIYing, but that's okay. We just make it work, right? It's quite therapeutic, too, I think, painting. I never did a lot of painting in my life. When I was young, I used to do ceramics. Um, I would go to those ceramic classes that the city would put on. And I would paint in those, and I have a lot of fun doing that. But as an adult, I've just, probably in the last, I don't know, five years maybe, have I been into painting or doing any kind of DIYs and that kind of stuff. All right. This toothpick is not wanting to hold my thing together at all. Let's see. Mm. Okay, I don't want to work on this one. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, so there's the first coat on the cloudless. And again, I'm just going to sit it there and let it dry. And I will be back to show you the progress after I put some more coats on. Guys, don't mind my shadow. The sun is out in full effect. Um, now, okay, so I got my three coats on these pumpkins. I lost some footage. 
unfortunately, of me making my stem. So what I did was I just took the nautical rope. I cut off a piece like this big. I cut it and I hot glued it at the bottom, just at the bottom. I didn't do the top. I just hot glued it at the bottom. Then the rest of my strand, I pulled it apart and took one of these and wrapped it around that the one that I had hot glued at the bottom. I started at the bottom, at the base. I just wrapped that single layer around. I glued it once halfway up. Then I glued it again at the top and cut it and cut the remainder off. And that is my stem. So I lost that footage. I apologize. I pushed record and I don't know what happened. Then I also painted a, a random leaf so I could have one that would match. This was a green or an orange colored one from the Dollar Tree. I just took some antique parchment with one little drop of nutmeg and mixed it together and painted this. So if you guys don't have the proper leaf colors, you can always do that. So I apologize that I don't have that footage. So now all three pumpkins are dry and now I've just got to do the ridges on them. So what I'm going to do make sure this is recording because yeah okay <laughs> I don't want to lose more footage um so anyway I'm just gonna put a little bit of the antique parchment and then I'm gonna put another drop of the nutmeg whoops two drops and I'm gonna mix that in to do the lines and I think I'm going to use this teeny tiny brush. This one I really like. So let's see. Actually, I'm going to use this to mix it. Okay, so I'll mix that in. Yeah, that's more of the color I was looking for. and I'm just gonna I just wiped it once onto my um, paper towel so it didn't have as significant of a color if that makes a sen makes sense I just want it to kind of get in that groove a little bit I don't want it to be too dark I want it to be real faint and of course towards the top it can be more prominent and if you want to put more, you could put more. On the other one that I made, I did multicolored on these ridges, but I don't think I'm going to do that on this one because I like it better without it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just kind of giving a little bit of definition to the, to the ridges. And I found, I've tried this with a bigger brush too, and it was just a pain. So I like it with this really fine one. And this pumpkin has like different ridges, like, but I don't, I think it looks weird to do every single ridge because some of them are super close together. See how this one, there's a ridge right in between that? I'm not going to highlight that because I did that on my first one and I was not happy that I had done that. So you're just kind of putting a shadow. And you're just like a little shadow in there. And 
and it's obviously not perfect, but that's okay. I tried on my first one to do like a dry brush technique, um, like to where you wipe it in between and stuff, but it just did not work right. It started taking off the paint. <laughs> So I don't know if you need to like put some type of a sealer on it before you can do something like that or what, but I'm not gonna, I'm just putting the little line so hopefully you can see that. Okay, so there's that one. Now I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do the same color on this one too. I may just do the same color on all of them actually. So let's see here. Okay, you guys, I lost more footage. Can you believe it? My phone was overheating in the sun, so it was shutting off without me realizing it. So I moved us into the garage to finish up this last part. Now, <clears throat> okay, so. You didn't get to see me doing the blue pumpkin. And all I did was add a little bit more nutmeg to the ridges. Or no, no. This one I kept exactly the same. It was the um, peach. When I did the peach, I had to add a little bit more. Wait. Now I'm confusing myself. Was it the peach? I don't know. Whichever one. I can't remember which one I did on the video now. I'm getting all flustered because I've lost two sets of footage and I'm so frustrated. <laughs> this is why I don't do tutorials. Um, okay, so I think it was this one. The color was too similar um, because of the antique parchment, so I had to add an extra drop of nutmeg. Just do it until it's a little bit darker and just highlight those ridges. So that was the part that I lost. Okay, so now We've got everything. I'm going to show you again because we're not in the sun, so maybe you could see it better. We've got the stem. We've got some lamb's ear. And then we've got the two leaves. The one I painted and the one that was already this color. Okay. So, we're going to have the blue one is going to be in the middle. This one is going to be on the bottom the antique parchment. So you're just going to want to find the the side that you like. And I left the toothpick in because that can help anchor it to the next one. So you're going to find the spot that you like on each one and then we're going to hot glue them together. Okay, so I already got my hot glue gun and we're just going to put hot glue on there. Now, if you want this to be like permanent, you might want to add some E6000 to it as well. I'm just dealing, doing the hot glue. Because I'm not that concerned about it. And then we're just going to stick it right on. There. Okay. And then we'll just push that down. I like to keep the root, the, the seam line like on the sides of each one too. Mm, let's see. And you may need to add some more glue, like I do. I guess I had it too much in the middle, not enough on the edges. So just lift it up and add a little more if you need to. If you are using E6000 with it, you're going to want to put something on it to anchor, you know, to keep it together 
so that it sets and, and leave it for like 24 hours. A little bit of that glue. Whoops. Took off some of the paint. Lovely. <laughs> this is a this is not a perfect DIY, you guys. <laughs> By any means. Ay ay ay. Real life though, right? Real life. Okay, so this is not even not even adhering as well as the first one I did. There we go. So you just gotta push it together really good until it dries. There. I think that's good enough. Let's see. I'm gonna put this on low because I have my thing on high and I think the glue is too hot. Yeah, because it's taking off part. Look at, look at, it's totally messing up right there. It's taking off part of the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, this is not going as seamless as the one that I did where I didn't video, of course, right? <laughs> That's how it always works. I'm going to try and put some more glue because this is just not holding right. And excuse my dogs, they're moving around in here. One of my dogs is really elderly. She's almost 16 and she stumbles and she's definitely having some old age difficulties. Okay. So there, we've got those two together. Now, before I glue on the peach one on the top, I'm going to just dig a little hole here so that I have room to put the stem. And I'm actually going to do that before, I'm going to glue the stem on before I glue it on to the stack. So let's see here. Okay, so I just chipped away a hole there that's big enough to put my stem. So now we're going to go ahead and just hot glue the stem and just put a bunch of glue there. And then we we'll just stick it right in that hole. Just like so. <clears throat> And also, let's see here, because this is going to go, it's going to go on here like this. Can you guys see that? It's going to stack right on there, but I'm going to wait. Like I said, I'm not going to glue it on until I get all the stuff on to this that I want on there. So... You just kind of play with it, lay it, lay it there, see what you, what you like before you glue it. Um, and I think this is what I'm going to do for mine. Okay, so first off, we're just going to glue down this. And I've got my scissors. Use that to push it down because that glue is hot. Okay. And then I'm going to glue that one on top as well. Just like so. Okay. And then we're 
just gonna glue on the lamb's ear, so. I'm just gonna do it just like that. So first I'm gonna put this one on. I'm liking this stem a lot more than the other one I did. Okay, and then lastly, we're just gonna put a little bit on this one and glue that one on right over the top. So that is what it looks like. And you could put anything on here. You could put berries, whatever it is that you like, that you're into, um, you can put on there. So that's what the top looks like. Let me go ahead and change my angle here and raise you guys up so that you guys can see me glue this on the top. So I had to go grab another glue stick. Make sure you've got a couple of glue sticks on hand. And now we're going to go ahead and get this ready to put the top layer on. This time, I'm going to put the glue more around the outer edges. Okay. And then here we go. the glue strings. Okay, so, and that is it. Just getting that glue on there and holding it for a couple minutes so it adheres and you're good to go. So, there is the pumpkin stack. I don't even know what you call these. But I've always wanted to make one, and I never had. And, yeah, so I'm happy that Karen, case for Karen, talked me into doing a tutorial for her. I just wish I wouldn't have lost that footage, but like I said, that stem is super, super easy. You just wrap the single strand around the nautical rope and glue it, hot glue it, and that's it. So I will... Um, wrap this up with some pictures and thank you guys so much for watching and bearing with me and all my sun shadow and weird placement and everything else <laughs> I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching and I hope you guys are having a fabulous day I'll talk to you guys soon bye